Hey guys, I'm back. It's Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. I hope you've been enjoying these. I, I get a big kick out of this. Hey, I'm not making any money on this. There's no ads on my playlist, at least not yet. And uh, we're having a, just a good time, Kevin and I, uh, and, and uh, just uh, talking about uh, Vintage Scuba and Sea Hunt as well. Don't forget to check out my Sea Hunt playlist as well on YouTube. Just I don't know how you find that. Kevin, he's, he's the computer geek. Just look for Alec Pierce Sea Hunt, I guess. And uh, you'll enjoy them too. But this is Vintage Scuba. And I've been taking a little bits and pieces from the from the past the equipment out of the. I have a big uh, vintage scuba collection, all kinds of stuff. And I just go upstairs and take. Oh, this is neat, and I talk about it for five or ten minutes or twenty. But anyway, we're going to try to keep this short. This is kind of interesting because this is about computers. Now you're saying to yourself, "Hold on a minute, hold on a minute. How can it be vintage computers?" Yep, vintage computers. Now you know that today every diver has a computer. Maybe you don't. I'm talking about you, that old guy at the back there with the gray hair. Uh, maybe you don't have a computer. Everybody else does. Let me explain something to you. New divers taking courses today, learning how to become a scuba diver, are on computers in the pool and the open water dives. That's all they learn. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you something. This might be shocking to you, especially you at the back there. New divers don't see decompression tables. You remember the tables when you took your course? If you took your course more than 10 years ago, you had tables, you know? And you're, okay, I'm at 60 feet for 20 minutes, so I'm a B diver, whatever that means. I flip, flip over, okay, I'm on the surface for an hour, so now I'm an A diver, that's good, and so I can go to 60 feet for two minutes or whatever. You remember all that stuff? No, you don't. You've forgotten it. You remember doing it, but you don't remember the details, right, usually. Anyway, it doesn't matter, it's gone. Piece of history. It's all computerized now. Let me clarify something else, by the way. Dive computers. People say, I don't want a dive computer. My computer at home is always screwing up. I get all kinds of germs and, 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 and kind of germs, what's it called? Viruses. Viruses, yes. You don't get germs. I would have it, you see. And I, uh, they're not really computers. They're really integrated circuits. There's no computing required. They just have to take depth, time, number. Depth time, you see? So they're very, very rugged. There's nothing moving, there's no drives in there or anything else, so they're extremely rugged. As a matter of fact, if you had asked me 10 years ago, buying a computer, if you wanted the need of the backup, I would have said, probably not a bad idea. If you had said five years ago, I'm gonna buy a dive computer, but I wanna keep my gauges, my depth gauge and, and so on, I would say, well, it's not a bad idea, sure, why not? But not today. People buy computers today at our store, and they say, I'm going to buy a computer. I want to buy a new computer, and uh, what should I get? And I said, they say, now, should I keep my old computer, take it with me? Should I get my uh, gauges? No. Computers today, for all intents and purposes, are 100% reliable diet computers. Now, you know, they're all mature enough, especially you at the back there, uh, <laughs> to know that when I, I mean, someone says 100%, they mean 100%. They mean for all intents and purposes 100%. Sure, every once in a while the computer screws up, just like a cell phone screws up every once in a while, but not very often. And people say, well, I want to keep my gauges because if my computer breaks, what am I going to do? Well, you're going to do the same thing that you would do if your gauge broke. You're going to make a slow, safe ascent to the surface. The dive's over. Not a big deal. Computers are no different than other gauges. They just have a lot more information for you. So where did I start on this? Computers today are universal. Some resorts we've been to in the last couple of years require computers, so I'll get used to it. If you don't like the idea of computers, tough. Get a double hose regulator and do vintage dives only. Hey, I like that too. However, computers, yes, there were computers in the 60s. There were, there actually were. I'm gonna show you a couple. I think they're gonna freak you out. Size, the, the, the technology, well, there wasn't any technology. They were guessing at them and so on, how they looked and so on. So let's do, let's do that. Let's go back. Let's go back in time. Let's go back 40, 50, 50, 50 years and see what diet computers look like. I want to share a little bit of personal history with you. I had a very, very good friend living here uh, who, who was, who was a, a, an interesting man. Unfortunately, he just very recently passed away. Uh, he was quite old. And uh, he was been in the scuba industry almost as long as me, 50 or 60 years. And, and, and well, according to him, he knew everything about scuba. We used to tease him a lot. And, uh, and uh, he was a great guy, Fred. Some of you may know, know who I'm talking about. And he was a great guy. And he worked at a very, very advanced company here in Canada. Uh, they, they were involved in making the Canada arm for the, uh, for the space shuttle and a lot of very highly technical, leading edge stuff. Well, about 60 years ago, they thought that they would make a dive computer. So they did. They made a dive computer. Now, way back then, 
We didn't know a whole lot about decompression sickness. We knew you could get it. We knew if you stayed down and got too many bubbles and came up without getting rid of the bubbles, you would get real bubbles in your blood. You know, that's basically what we knew. But scientists and studying, they, they did learn other things, and you may know some of this. They knew that there were five different types of tissues in your body. There's muscle and bone and so on. And they knew that each of those tissues absorbed nitrogen at different rates. Fast, medium, slow, and so on, you see? So this company that Fred worked for, <clears throat> Peggy well, you know what we can do? We can make a computer, and it will show how quickly the nitrogen is absorbed by each of those rates. And we'll feed that information into a gauge, and the gauge will say, you're safe or you're going to die. You know what I mean? And that's exactly what they did. Look at this. This is a prototype computer, dive computer. Whoa, what's with that? Now, you were close enough to look at this. Maybe Kevin can zoom in here a little bit. I'll show you a bit. If you zoom in closely, Kevin, you see these are actually are five Borden tubes. Same Borden tube that's inside your pressure gauge, your old depth gauge, you see? The brass tube that moves as the pressure changes, okay? And those five tubes, each one has a little wire attached to it. You see, it's actually a little tube. You can hardly see that it's a tube, but it's a tube, okay? And then all five of those have a have an axle through the middle, and the axle goes up. I don't know if you can see in there, Kevin. Can you see those gears and so on in there? And they're all geared and worked together, and it comes out at this end as a needle. It's like a watch, okay? How do they work? Well, <laughs> what they did, this is going to sound pretty crude, but each of these five Borden tubes is supposed to represent one of the five tissues in your body. This is bone, okay, this is muscle, and this is fat, and so on, you see? <clears throat> and as you descended, the Borden tube would change a little bit, and then it would start to collapse back as the pressure, as you came back up. Each of those Borden tubes is connected to this little tube, and each tube on the end has a hole so the pressure can come back out. But the holes are all different, five different sized holes. So as you go down, of course, 100 feet, they all collapse the same amount. But as you start to come back up, they start to uncollapse, okay, open up at different rates, five different rates. Now, they had no idea what the rate was. And we know today that each person is a little bit different. But there were five tissues, five Borden tubes, and they all moved at different rates because they had different size holes on the end. And that information, good, bad, or not, was connected together, and you had a dial at this end. And the dial at this end would say, yep, you're safe, or nope, you have to stop. How about that? Very, very crude, very, very old. This is a prototype. This was never, ever made into a real dive computer, but that's how they started Now, it wasn't very long before somebody said, hey, that's a good idea those guys up in Canada had. Maybe we can make a decompression meter and make it look pretty, put a nice box around it, paint it a nice color, maybe paint it black and chrome, and sell it. Well, there's a good idea. That's how ideas get started. So what did this eventually become? I'm going to put this down now. You'll never see another one of these. This is it. Pretty neat, huh? Anyway, so how would that turn into? Why did it turn into this? A black egg. No, no, it's not a black egg. This actually <clears throat> is a protective box with an O-ring. It was put in there, you'd put your decompression meter, we'll call it that, decompression meter, in here to protect it. Because it, if it went in airplanes or up at high altitudes and so on, you could hurt the decompression meter. And look what's inside the egg. Aha! Uh -huh. Inside the egg is a decompression meter. It's exactly what it is. Now, this decompression meter, meter was made by a company in Italy called SOS. And SOS made lots of these, and then they would sell them to other companies that were in the scuba business. SOS was not in the scuba business. They were in technology gauges and so on. <clears throat> they made a lot of gauges in the old days. This particular one was sold to Scuba Pro. And Scuba Pro, see it there? And Scuba Pro, that's their egg, took this, and they sold it to divers. Look at that. So that old prototype I showed you was miniaturized to some extent anyway, although this is awfully big on your wrist. <laughs> Look at this, is not like today's computer, is it? Awfully big still, but it was miniaturized. Oh, look, there's the needle. Stay out of the red. Five, this actually used only four tissues. So I guess they decided five, you don't need five. So the four tissues, and the needle would slowly go up and up and up and up until eventually said, uh oh, time to go up. About that simple. There's more information on there, but it was about that simple, guys. Uh, it, you know, as you stayed down too long, depth, time, more and more gas would go in, the board and tubes would stretch, the needle would go up, and pretty soon it said, you better go up. Decompression meter. How about that? Now, these were not, <clears throat> they were expensive. These probably cost about 100 bucks. 
a hundred bucks. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it was big bucks in the in the sixties. There were people in the sixties who worked hard a whole week and didn't earn a hundred dollars. So these were relatively expensive, but. Lots of divers had some money, you know, and they would get one of these and they used them. Uh, they weren't terribly, terribly accurate. You can probably figure that out. And also, unfortunately, they weren't terribly, terribly uh, um, reliable either. They tended to break down a little bit. They, they weren't great, but it was the first decompression meter. The tight, cute little story is that this is called the decompression meter. It says right on there, automatic decompression meter, automatic decompression meter, okay? serialized and everything else. However, as I say, these were not terribly reliable, not terribly uh, 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 <coughs> uh, accurate, and, and a lot of divers couldn't, couldn't afford them, so maybe they were jealous a little bit. And so these, these meters got a nickname. Now, they had a nickname, the Bendomatic. And they were called <laughs> Automatic Decompression Meter. Oh, you have a Bendomatic. Well, if you had one of these and you were about to go diving and you dive, oh, you have a bendomatic. It didn't instill a lot of confidence, but that's what they were called. Pretty neat, huh? And this one is brand spanking new in the uh, egg, the sealed case, and everything. I've never been in the water. That's pretty neat. So now, obviously, they improve. Over time, companies take an idea and they improve on it, make it better and better and better. So that's what happened, and we're still dealing in the 60s here. So here's another uh, another uh, uh, decompression meter. Now, this is from the same company, SOS. And this, if you, I don't know if you can take a close look at this one, Kevin. Maybe you can't. <clears throat> this one is called the four tissue automatic decompression computer. First time the word computer up to now has been a meter. You see? And if you look on the top here, you see. There's, there's the four tissues, those four holes. And it almost looks as if they can be adjusted. I don't know about that. I haven't read the manual in the chart. But each, and in this particular case, each of these, it has four separate gauges. And so there's a little tube, and, as, and I'm thinking as you went down that a line would go up the tube and up and up. On each one of these, there are different, different heights to see, and eventually one would reach the red, and I think red makes sense that red would say, hey, you got a problem, and you go up. I haven't read the entire manual, but uh, there you go. There's a manual with it, and the four tissue automatic decompression computer. There it is. Then if you had big arms, <coughs> strong wrists, you would strap this sucker onto your arm like that, and there you go. And uh, that's what replaced the Bendomatic. Came in a little nice little protective case, just like that. Again, I have a brand spanking new one, never been wet. It's awfully big, though, so they made a smaller one. <laughs> now, I don't know. There's not too much information. I have the case for it, and I haven't read too much about this, but this is a little, si little simpler. I'm, I'm guessing maybe this doesn't have uh, a four tissues, although I see there's four holes in the back, Kevin. I didn't read too much about this, but this is the same company, same type of meter. It's a little smaller version. So they were getting, uh, getting better and better for divers as, as, as the divers uh, 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 demanded more, you know. I'm sure the price started to go down a little bit, so maybe this one was only $60 or whatever it was. I said, divers, hey, I can afford that. So they buy one, and so the market grew. I'm going to show you another one. It's pretty neat. This is heavy. This one's about four pounds, I'm, I'm guessing. This is pretty neat. Solid aluminum block. Aluminum back in the 60s and 70s was, was, uh, was quite expensive. Uh, we were just coming up after the war, 50s and 60s. Aluminum was almost unattainable. But it became, uh, obviously, a very good metal. But for underwater, it doesn't, it doesn't rust. Um, uh, and so uh, this particular one is made of aluminum. It's a solid aluminum block. If you could hold it, you see it about, about four pounds. <clears throat> and this is by a company called Orca. And Orca made several computers. They made a little, uh, a little uh, diver uh, model, a little uh, uh, plastic. It wasn't aluminum like this, a little diver model. And you can see that this is a little different. They've gotten rid of all that junk, all the tubes and the dials and so on. They just have a gauge. And this particular gauge is an LCD, right? Yeah, LCD display. LCDs were new as well. And this particular gauge, it has a graph on there, and I can't describe it exactly for you. I didn't use one of these, but they were very popular. In fact, this particular one I have in my hand has got instructor written on it. I don't know what that means. Instructor, diver, what's the difference? Same rules apply, right? But maybe this was a <clears throat> special version for the instructor. And it had straps, strapped on your wrist. It was still a big, clumsy thing. Some divers put this onto a a lanyard so they can pick it up and look at it. But there's a, the next version, and th these were quite popular. Orca was a good, good company. They made, as I say, a good many uh, diver models as well, smaller plastic models as well of, uh, of decompression uh, meters. Okay, I want to show you one more. 
This is a pretty popular one. <clears throat> Made in Europe again. Came in a little padded case like this. And uh, this was very, very popular. Uh, this, instead of using LCDs, used LEDs. Now, I wish I could charge this up or turn the LEDs on, but I cannot. This has an internal battery, has to be charged, and the batteries are long gone. I haven't even removed them. I should do that sometime. But this is a pretty neat instrument. You see the size of it here, and again, it's strapped onto your arm like that, and it had like a dashboard in your car. Look at that. Whoa, and LEDs, red lights and numbers appeared in there. Look at that. Isn't that pretty slick? Then it shows on here your, your, your dive time and the depth and your ascent time, feet, meters, and it shows you whether you should go up, blinking red lights. This was, this was like a little pinball machine when you were diving. Lights and things everywhere. Of course, when you understood what all those lights meant, and then you'd be able to read it and say, hey, I gotta go up, or whatever, you see? And this was another very, very neat, and very popular device as well. This was uh, called the Deco Brain. D-E-C-O hyphen brain. Deco brain, ah, kind of a neat idea. Somebody sat up all night and thought of that and got a good name for it. This is another relatively popular early, very early uh, decommission meter. So there you go, guys. There's an idea from the very first idea, uh, how they were first conceived, and then how the production models and how they evolved over a period of 10 or 15 or 20 years until today. And today, as you know, if you've looked at my, I think I just did a tech tip a little while ago, didn't I, Kevin? A tech tip on um, on uh, uh, on uh, dive computers and how they're a little like, like a wristwatch. I got a wristwatch, and a wristwatch does everything for you: the depth and time, and up to it, it, up to nine dives a day. It tells you when you can go flying. It, t it logs your dives up to 99 dives. It tells you everything. You got you just got your mother-in-law's phone number in there, and no, I get it's, it's everything. They have so much information in there, and you get air integrated as well with a transmitter. So you watch this, and, there's a, and it knows how much air is in your tank from your wrist. It's pretty neat. So today's computers are fantastic, as are most computer-generated uh, uh, technology, as most computer-generated technology is today. It really is fantastic and very, very reliable. Not like, <clears throat> not like the Bendomatic. However, uh, I thought you might enjoy that. A little bit of history of back computers, some of these weird devices that we used to wear back in the 50s and the 60s into the 70s, uh, they were kind of neat. Uh, we still had depth and pressure gauges. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because uh, sometimes it worked, sometimes it did. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Bit of information on early decompression meters from Alec Pierce's Vintage Scuba. Keep those comments coming. I really enjoy them. Also gives me ideas for additional playlists. Vintage Scuba and Sea Hunt, and of course, Tech Tips. Hope to see you soon. Thanks very much.